Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Ray, and today we're learning Final Cut Pro X in just 15 minutes. So we're gonna be going through the process of how to create a video inside of Final Cut Pro from start to finish. And we're actually gonna be teaching you in the order that we'd personally use to create a video. Now, we know that 15 minutes isn't even nearly enough time to master a video editing program, but we hope that this will be a really helpful resource to get you up and running as quickly as possible. And along the way, we're gonna be showing you some helpful hints to hopefully make your time as simple and fun as possible, but let's not waste any more time and let's just jump right into it. So when you first open up Final Cut Pro X, this is what you should see. If you've been working on a project previously, that work will appear as you left off when you last closed Final Cut. But to start with, let's pretend that you're wanting to start fresh. You have a bunch of different panels which serve different purposes as you create your video, but to start, in the top left is your libraries where your project, media, and perspective clips will be located once you bring them into Final Cut. And if you're opening up Final Cut for the first time, you probably don't already have what's called a library here on the left. So you're going to need to create one by going up to File new library. Basically your library is going to be where all of your associated files are stored. Your project files, your media, etc. To be clear, this isn't your project itself, but like the name library would suggest, an area to house a bunch of different materials. And your project will be located within this library once you create it. Choose a location which is also on your fastest possible hard drive. And you can now see that it appears here on the left. You can now create your first project by going up to File, New, Project, or by hitting the New Project button here if it's available. Here I'd suggest naming your project something that tells you exactly what it is that you're working on, and if you know the exact specifications of the footage and format you'll be working with, you can manually set those up here, but you can also just let Final Cut automatically set this up based on the first clip you place down into your timeline. So now with everything set up, let's go over how to actually import media to begin working with. To import footage, you can either hit Command I to bring up your media import window, where you can search your computer for clips that you want to use. But what my personal favorite method is, is just to drag and drop your footage from the finder window right into your events folder. Easy as that. Once you've imported your clips, it's time to figure out which part of your clips you actually want to use. I mean, you could just plop down an entire piece of footage onto your timeline, but chances are you want to use a smaller section of it. So this is where previewing and selecting portions of your footage becomes really helpful. With your footage imported into your library, you can now easily review your footage by clicking on the clip and hitting spacebar to play it. From here, you can see that there's a yellow highlighted section over your footage. What you can do is you can actually drag it to include only a smaller section. This is what's called setting your in and out points, designating what portions of your clips you actually want to use. You can also skim or play your footage here and set these points by hitting the I key for your in point and the O key for your out point. Okay, so now that you've selected a portion that you want to use, you can bring it up into your timeline simply by clicking and dragging it from your library into your timeline. Okay, so now that we know how to select different portions of clips and bring them into our timeline, you can do this for a variety of clips and bring in a bunch of different clips that you'd like to use. A nice little shortcut that you can use for this is once you've gotten your selection here in your library highlighted, hitting the E key will paste that selection to the very end of your timeline. This can help speed up your workflow a lot. And all of these ways of selecting footage will also work for still images as well as audio. So now we have our desired media on the timeline. So let's go over how to work with this media effectively. Just to see how the timeline works, let's quickly press the space bar to play. You can see immediately that our timeline works by moving from left to right and playing our media here in the viewer as it appears in order on our timeline. When a clip switches on the timeline, as our playhead passes over it, we can see that the clip switches in our viewer to reflect that change. But here's another thing to note as well. If we have two clips stacked one on top of the other, we will only see the topmost clip, almost as if our timeline is being viewed from the top down. Okay, so now that we know how to view our work, let's press the spacebar again to pause it and use our cursor to click and drag to move all these clips around and get the order of clips that we want. It's important to know as well though, that in addition to having video clips, your audio files like music or dialogue will also appear, but underneath the video section. While these will typically be independent clips, if a video file has audio attached to it, it'll appear as a part of that larger video clip. 
but you can have many other music and audio files that are not directly attached. And when you have multiple items competing for the same space, they stack to ensure that they can coexist in the same place, helping you to organize things effectively. As we're moving these clips around, it's important to notice a couple of things. The first is that as we move things around, everything slides back towards the left to fill in any empty space, almost like there's a force pulling everything towards the left-hand side of the timeline. This is what's known as Final Cut's magnetic timeline in effect. In other editing software, clips would typically just stay in the same place as you move things around unless you give a specific action to fill in those empty gaps. But here in Final Cut, the default is to have all those clips slide in to fill the empty space. Additionally, you should notice that when you have stacked clips or even audio underneath, they're not free floating. They're actually attached by these connection points. What these do is show you where and on what clips that other clip is attached. You can move these connected clips around as you like, but if you move the base clip that they're attached to, all of the connected clips are going to move with them. This is really helpful for things that you'd like to keep together. But if you want to change where this connection point is located, and therefore also potentially which clip it's attached to, just hold Option and Command and click on a new location to set that new connection point. Great. In addition to just moving clips around, you can also shorten and lengthen them by simply hovering your mouse over the edge of the clip and clicking and dragging. This is the simplest way to change up your clip length, and you can see that when we do this against other clips, our timeline reacts to make space for this change. Now, as much as the magnetic timeline might be helpful, there's also a way to turn it off in case you want to move around clips and have everything else just stay where it is. To do this, all you have to do is select the Position tool. You can do this by clicking the drop-down of Timeline tools here and selecting it manually, or by simply hitting the P key to bring it up immediately. Now, whenever you move a clip around, the space where it occupied is taken up by empty video space. But there's a variety of other tools as well to help you achieve your editing goals. If you want to go back to your regular selection tool that we had to start with, you can select it here or hit the A key to effectively turn your magnetic timeline back on and move your clips around like before. Now, we'd encourage you to play around with all of these different tools to see what they all do, but there's one more that we're going to be showing you in detail, and that's the Blade tool. By selecting it here, using the shortcut key B, you can now click on any clip to split it into two separate clips. To be clear, this won't make any sort of difference to the appearance or the timing of your clips in your viewer, as when we play back over top of this new cut, we can't see any difference. But now if we separate the two, we can see that they act as two separate units. This is another way that you can control clips, maybe by cutting out a section in the middle of one video clip, for example. But now that you have a better understanding of how to manipulate your clips on your timeline, you can more effectively line up the order and timing that you'd like your clips to actually play. And once you've done that, you can make them stand out even more by adding things like effects and transitions. These give you a quick and effective way to manipulate your media. And to find all of your effects, you can go to the bottom right section here and ensure that this button is selected. There's a lot of different effects available, and some of them are pretty basic, while others are amazingly complex. If you're not sure what an effect does, that's okay, because you can hover your mouse over the effect in question, and whatever clip is selected on your timeline, you'll see a preview for that effect in action. Pretty cool, right? Some of these are pretty simple color and lighting changes, while others actually manipulate the structure of your footage. And once you find an effect that you like, you can simply drag and drop it onto your footage to apply it to that clip. But you don't have to just leave it as it is, you can actually take this and adjust it by going up to your inspector here in the top right and adjusting the parameters that are associated with that effect, allowing you to take a simple effect and make it truly your own. And not only are there video effects, but also effects for manipulating your audio. And while these are just as important as video effects in our opinion, you'll probably be more likely to use transitions a little bit more, which can be found by clicking this button here to switch to your list of transitions. Just like effects, you can preview these by hovering over them, and then you can apply them by actually clicking and dragging them to the cutting point between two clips. If you find that you can't apply these, it's likely because there's not enough space after the clip cuts to be able to actually use. So shortening these clips at that edge might actually help you to be able to use these transitions. And just like before with effects, you can go up to the inspector and adjust any options available to customize it to make it your own. 
Now that your project is looking great, you're probably ready to start incorporating text. Adding text is a pretty common thing that you'll be doing in most of your videos. And thankfully, it's really easy. There's an entire sidebar in your library section dedicated to text. And you can add some pretty basic or really fancy looking text effects. But most of the time, what you're going to be doing is likely adding basic text. So all you need to do is find the basic text preset, or you can search for it here up in your search bar and drag and drop it to any place over top of your footage. You can see that it appears like any other piece of footage. And if we bring the playhead over past the area where it exists, the text will disappear. If we need to lengthen or shorten it, we can simply click and drag the edge here just like any other regular piece of media. And to actually change this text is really simple. We can click and drag it around, double click to highlight it, or we can go up here to the text inspector to get some more details for our editing. We can make it say something completely different. We can also change the size, the font, some more detailed parameters like alignment, or even the color by going down here to face, dropping it down, and changing the color manually. And you can even add effects and transitions to text, not just video. You have a lot of control over making your text look perfect, but what people tend to spend much less time on than they should is their audio. Audio is potentially the most underappreciated aspect of video editing. If your video doesn't sound good, you'd be pretty surprised at how quickly it can ruin people's perception of your whole piece. So let's go over some basic tools to help you get your audio right. You'll notice right here under your viewer that there's little audio meters that pop up and down as your audio gets louder or softer. You can click this meter here and bring it up into a larger form beside your timeline. Now, if you notice that it gets up to the point where it starts displaying yellow or even red portions during playback, it means that your audio is at the risk of clipping and sounding terrible. So lowering the volume is likely needed. And a great place to aim for keeping it is in between negative six to negative 12 decibels. To do that, let's go to our audio in question here. And you should see that a white line here goes across the entire middle of your audio. If not, you can go here to adjust the way that your timeline media is displayed until you can see this line. By hovering over this and clicking it, you can now drag up to increase your volume and drag down to decrease your volume. And if you wanted to change the length over time, you can hold the option button so that a little plus icon appears. This will now let you click and add what's called a keyframe. This is a signal for the audio to be at this volume at this point in time. If you make a second keyframe and adjust that, the previous one will stay where it is, but your audio will change over time depending on the distance between them. Cool, right? Lastly, there's also a host of audio effects you can add to adjust specific parameters and make it sound its best. So we'll let you play around and start to discover how to take advantage of those over time. But the last thing that we wanna cover before exporting our finished video is how to color your video. Color is one of the most intimidating aspects of video editing because it's probably the least understood by most people on a technical level. So we're gonna be keeping this basic and showing you how you can start to work with your color to make your videos look their best. While we would suggest learning all types, color boards, wheels, curves, and hue saturation, when first learning to do basic color work, we would suggest sticking with the color wheels. Here, you can scroll down and achieve some basic adjustments with temperature to make the image either more blue or more yellow to correct for white balance. And you can also control the tint, green versus purple, as well as the hue if you want to rotate everything slightly around the color wheel. Then, as you get more confident, you can play around with the color wheel section for shadows, midtones, and highlights, pushing these sections into different colors while also controlling exposure, and saturation for each of these elements of your footage. Starting first with getting your footage to look more true to life and then adding character and style when you get more comfortable. And once you've added a change to a clip, you might wanna add that same color change to another clip instead of doing it all over again. So to do that, simply highlight the footage you made the changes to and copy it with Command C. Then go to the clip that you now wanna paste those changes to and hit Shift Command V. And there you go, you've got the same color adjustments added to that new clip. And you can also go back to the inspector and adjust those manually if you'd like. But now that we've finished all of that, our video project is looking great, and it's time to share it with the world by exporting it. Exporting basically means that you'll be taking all of your media and instructions on your timeline and squishing it together into a single video file. And the best part of this is that it's really, really simple. All you need to do is go up to File, or hit the shortcut key, Command E, or go up to the top right here, 
and click the share button and choose master file. Here you can name your clip whatever you'd like and change any details about the type and quality that your new file will be. Thankfully, this exporting process is much simpler than in many other video editing programs. My personal advice is that if you'd like this to be the highest possible quality and you don't care too much about file size, I'd recommend going with Apple ProRes 422. But if you're gonna be concerned about file size, and if you're uploading to the internet to places like YouTube where there's gonna be a lot of compression anyways, feel free to select H.264 from the codec dropdown here. H.264 is our personal recommendation just because it's an excellent compromise between file size and quality. You probably won't notice much of a difference, especially with any compression that happens from uploading to online platforms. And you can see here that when we make this change, our readout of the estimated file size changes in the bottom right here to give you an understanding of how much space you can expect to be taken up by your new video file. Once you're ready for it to export, Click Next, where you'll be asked to give a location for where you want to place this new video file. And once you do, Final Cut will begin to export your finished video. Guys, we really hope that you enjoyed this introduction to learning Final Cut in 15 minutes. We realize that there's so much more to learn and that this is just a starting point. But here at Motion Array, we have countless other tutorials all about editing in Final Cut Pro. Feel free to check all of these out, as well as our awesome templates, effects, stock footage, and more to help make your video projects in Final Cut look as amazing as possible. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.